Hi, welcome back to mom to mom I'm so glad you're here. Megan is going to walk us through a couple of fun springtime activities, but before we go to her, I want to share a few of the many positives that we've been finding through this stay-at-home order and this big change in our lives. Firstly, turns out my family thrives on a more solid routine. Probably haven't had this much of a routine yet, and we're actually all doing really well with it, which is not what I expected. Uh, my six-year-old is finding that she knows what to expect in her day. My one-year-old is taking more consistent nap times, which is always good. Uh, we are sticking to a loose schedule between about nine and two in the day uh, where my daughter knows what to expect. I know what to expect. There's really no argument against it. We say, well, it's 10 o'clock school work or it's one o'clock that's supposed to be cleaning time. We look at the posted schedule and there's really no arguing. It's just on the schedule. Secondly, we are eating at home more, eating out less. We're actually working out more consistently. It's part of our daily routine as a family. And that part is not only fun, it's obviously a healthier lifestyle. That is definitely a positive we're observing. Thirdly, we're finding that we're getting to know each other on a different level by being at home more and being together more, not on a vacation mode, but on a regular routine system. Turns out it's really good. My outgoing social butterfly, she's able to actually thrive on being home. She's doing much better than I expected and I get to be a part of her creativity and learning daily, which is super fun to watch the little brains work. My son is finding that because we're home more, he's and he's growing up. So he's just getting more and more confident with exploring the same areas again and again. He can open cupboards and pull everything out with much more intent and confidence now. And it's so fun getting to know him, getting to know each other in this different way. We, I, I love these positives that we're seeing. I think this is such a time to, we have so many opportunities to embrace uh, this change in this time of rest. And I know Tiffany, one of our table hostesses, also had some positives that she wanted to share. So let's hear from her as well. I was pretty anxious going into this because I don't like being stuck at home repeatedly. <laughs> um, but it is what it is and I understand why. So, for my 20 month old, he spends a good portion of his day like in and out of the car because he's the baby of three. So, you know, dropping his siblings off, picking them up, baseball, whatever. So by the end of the day, by pickup time, he's pretty over getting in and out of the car seat. So we don't have to do that for a while. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. He gets a little break. Um, and another thing, it's it's been a good perspective changer for me, I guess. Never in my life, your life, have we seen something like this where we couldn't just go to the store and get what we needed, you know, because it was completely sold out. And people in other countries face that all the time for many different reasons, but it's just been a game changer. I've never experienced that before. Um, so just appreciating how blessed we are in this country that that's not a common occurrence for us, that this is out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, so just appreciating what our life in America looks like. Thank you, like. Tiffany, for sharing that. I super appreciate the idea of shifting our perspective and just being so thankful for how blessed we are here in America, because we, we truly are. Thank you for that. I know that you all are observing positives in your own homes. If there's something else, please comment and share those so that we can all have that positive encouragement. I'd love to hear what positives you're finding through this change. One of the ways we can embrace this time with our home time is finding some fun activities to do. I know we're all seeking fun activities to do, right? So let's hear from Megan who has some great springtime craft ideas for us. Hi ladies, welcome to my house, Megan here. You know, I always wanted to have all of you over, but I didn't think that my kitchen and house could accommodate all of you, but it looks like it can. That joke? I don't know. But regardless, I'm glad to see all of you and hoppy spring. It is craft time and I love a good theme and today it's hopping into spring because it has officially sprung. So today we're gonna make sock bunnies and hippity hoppity popcorn balls. I love to eat, so if I can accommodate a craft into eating, 
I am all for it. And then these bunnies are also awesome because along with our spring theme, new life, everything is budding, Easter is rapidly approaching, and in order to start celebrating, we are upcycling. So we're taking things such as spare socks that have lost their partners and giving them new life. So we're upcycling these guys today. Um, I think it's gonna be a really fun craft. So again, also, everything that we're doing, hopefully you have the materials for already in your house. We don't want to elicit a trip out. We wanna use things that we already have and that little hands can hopefully help with. Um, so nobody helped with this one, although it still looks like little hands helped put it together and that's just me, so. Whoops, maybe yours will look even more professional. So to start with, what you are going to need for your sock bunnies, a spare sock, rice. You can use beans or other materials. Rice is a little bit smoother and easier to work with, um, but I did try one with, oh gosh, with the beans to make hummus. So you can kind of get creative with it. You're also going to need either three rubber bands or three strings, um, scissors, and a sharpie to make the simple face. If you have buttons, even better. But if you don't, oh well, so be it. We are upcycling, using what we have to make our bunny family. Um, I'm also gonna take these bunnies, I'm gonna make one for each of them, and I'm hoping that in the days before us, I will actually be able to hide them in our house. People do like the elf on the shelf. I'm going to do the bunny and the girls are going to be able to find the bunnies in different spots. Um, so I'm going to start that. I'm hoping you ladies will like that idea and get behind it also. So really simple. Put rice in until you feel that your bunny looks well fed. Then you just start taking the rubber bands, you tie one at the top so your rice is an escape, and then you can kind of wiggle this midline in. So he feels like me trying to squeeze into my pants sometimes. Here we go, hold on. Give him a nice little waistline here, band it together. Okay. My little happy bunny. There is the the bulk of the work is done. That's why this is fun. It goes quick. The kids can help. If you don't like the way it turns out, unwrap them or untie them and start again. Now I'm gonna add a little bunny cotton tail to this design here. Here we go. Because that's everybody's favorite part of the bunnies, right? A little cute tail. Okay. All right. So we have his body made, his little tail behind as he hops away from us. Now the ears, and you can be as specific or as quick as you want to be. I tend to be kind of a do it and ask questions later when it comes to this type of thing. So I am just gonna go for it. But if you want to, you can mark out the ears. It might actually turn out better, you know, for the sake of doing it, let's just do it. I'm gonna mark out a few little lines here. That way I get some nice, points for his cute little ears and then you just take your scissors and you cut those lines try to pull it I do have fabric scissors uh, my grandma years ago made me promise that I'd never use them on anything but fabric so I could have pulled them out today but instead I'm using my kitchen scissors nobody made me promise to use them on just kitchen supplies so here we go they are my favorite kitchen utility all right, little bunny ears taking form. And there they are. I'm gonna flop one over. Now I might go back after we get off here and kind of modify his, uh, his top and make this a little tighter. But it's all, it's all just for fun, right? Okay, there we go. I'm gonna use this black ribbon and give him a little necktie. These are definitely fun little bunnies. And then the eyes, here we go. One, two, 
So my daughter would say one, two, three, but now only, only two eyes. Here we go, and a little nose. Boop. There we go, and there is a start to my little bunny family. And now my girls can each have a bunny that they go and hunt for. Another fun idea for these guys, because they are pretty durable, um, for those of you that have kids that wanna play hopscotch, you can play hoppity scotch with these bunnies. And uh, a fun way to do that indoors or outdoors, you can use your chalk, of course, but if we were having snowy and cold days, so you can take your on-hand paint tape and line out your hopscotch, and you can use these guys as your uh, bunny bean bags if you want to. That's another fun way to use them. The other craft in the theme with our hoppity into spring are the uh, marshmallow popcorn balls. And I didn't have marshmallows on hand. I had leftover materials for making marshmallows from back in Christmas. So I went ahead and made a batch of marshmallow. And that's really simple to do. So if you guys want to uh, look up King Arthur homemade marshmallow recipes, you can. It takes maybe 12 minutes to make marshmallows and you get this marshmallow cream, which looks pretty awesome. So I did the simple batch with no food coloring um, and then just a half a cup of popcorn. A half a cup of popcorn is going to um, probably not get you enough to go with the King Arthur recipe, but a 10 ounce bag of marshmallows, the ratio will work out really well. So 10 ounce bag of marshmallows or homemade recipe, half a, half a cup of unpopped popcorn. And then I added pink food coloring to this one because anything pink is better according to my three-year-old. And then you just simply mix it together. Uh, add it in, mix it up. The best part, you get to butter your hands in order to form the balls, wrap them in cellophane, and then take your construction paper or whatever white paper you have and make your bunny ears. I just taped mine on and I think it'll do the trick. So, hope you ladies enjoyed this. Um, miss you all, hope you're all doing well. Can't wait to start hopping into Easter. And another fun way to do it might be to surprise your kids with bunny flower footprints. Um, you can get as into it or keep it as simple as you want to. I'm going to simply put some out, take my three little bunny fingers, and then tap them on my floor. And I have black wood floor, so everything shows anyway. They'll know that a bunny had passed through. Anyway, enjoy. Hoppy spring. Thank you, Megan, how fun. I'm so looking forward to making those cute little bunnies and I'm also looking forward to eating popcorn. A couple of announcements before we go. One is if your child attends Sunday morning and or, and or Tuesday nights at Hillside Church, that curriculum and some added activities are available on the Hillside Church website, which is hillsidechurch.com under children's ministries. There's some fun stuff and you get to see the videos and worship songs that they're used to doing, which is fun to watch. Also, you can find it on not only the church's website, but on the Kid Venture Facebook page. So if you're not already a part of that, go ahead and find it. It has some great resources and some encouragement for the parents and some activities for the kids as well. Also, Hillside Church is continuing to stream Sunday mornings, so you can still attend church from the comfort of your own couch from the comfort of your own home or wherever you may be. Uh, so you can go ahead at 845, log in, or if you need to watch later, you can. That's at hillsidechurch.com. I'm so glad you could join us today. I'm looking forward to next time and hearing from more of you. I miss you all, and I'm so glad that we get to be online together.